It's the Global History Show with Mr. Benjamin. This episode, Population Problems. Yippee! Woo! So excited! It's a... Targets for this episode explain why the population grew so rapidly with the Industrial Revolution. Describe how increasing affluence combines with growing populations to cause environmental destruction. Trace the four demographic stages of population distribution. Evaluate China's one child policy. Support what you think we should do to solve this global population problem. In this episode, we investigate global population problems. Is population really a problem? Does humanity face overpopulation Armageddon? Will a one world government have to form and sterilize some populations, controlling who gets to have children? Let's investigate. First, let's look at the historical context of the global population. Humans originated 400,000 years ago in Africa, and at least in some part of our early existence as a species, only 18,500 humans populated the Earth. Humans spread out of Africa, migrating to Europe, Asia, and beyond. As small groups of hunters and gatherers, humans hunted many large mammals to extinction, like woolly mammoths, giant sloths, and others. Humans were an invasive species, reducing biodiversity from the start. As climate became more mild, human populations began to slowly grow. Then came the end of the Paleolithic. Humans entered the Neolithic age, domesticating plants and animals, developing agriculture. With more reliable access to food, there was a population growth. This transition from hunting and gathering to herding and to agriculture is the first green revolution. Agricultural populations were more dense and towns and cities formed. Around 1700 CE, the second agricultural revolution began, followed by the Industrial Revolution. Cross-cultural innovations were shared through global trade between civilizations. New crops became available from the Columbian Exchange. The scientific method was used to improve farming. Selective breeding improved crop yields. This increase in crop production resulted in an increase in population. Healthier mothers survived childbirth, and fewer infants died at birth. The application of science improved health. Causes of disease were discovered. Medical practices improved, sanitation improved. Population began to skyrocket. In 1798, British economist and demographer Thomas Malthus noticed the population trend. Malthus wrote that in nature, plants and animals produce far more offspring than can survive, and that man too is capable of overproducing if left unchecked. Malthus believed that like rabbits, human populations naturally grow exponentially through breeding. That is, the speed of growth for human populations, like the growth of rabbit populations, increases faster and faster. Agricultural production, however, could only grow arithmetically with new arable land. That is, increase in food production can grow at a slower rate. He claimed that left unchecked, humans would inevitably exceed their food supply. This would result in mass starvation. Why is math rabbit's favorite subject? Because they're really good at multiplication. Malthus failed to predict the many advances in agriculture, applications of science to agriculture, including improved plant breeding and chemical fertilizers. We cannot count on our technological innovations to increase food production at our ever-increasing rates of population growth. In 1968, a population biologist from Stanford University, Paul Ehrlich, wrote the book Population Bomb, which asserted that Thomas Malthus's prediction of population growth outpacing agricultural production is still likely to happen. Ehrlich added a new dimension that must be considered to population growth relative to increased food production, the rise in consumption of natural resources. This concern for increased consumption of natural resources was further supported by Elizabeth Colbert in her 2011 article, The Anthropocene, The Age of Man. Will Steffen at the International Geosphere Biosphere Program observed that our recent history demonstrates a dramatic increase in human activity 
altering the environment. We increasingly are damming rivers, using water, expanding cropland, increasing irrigation and fertilizers, chopping down forests, driving more automobiles, generating more energy, burning coal, oil, and gas, dumping more waste, pollutants into the earth, atmosphere, and bodies of water. We must consider if there might be a point where the damage we do to the earth will decrease the amount of food we produce. The earth must have a carrying capacity. Right now, at the time I am making this video, an average person living in the United States has a much greater impact on the environment than the average person in Africa due to the differences in affluence. Americans eat more, waste more, drive more, use more energy. They are a greater drain on resources and generate more waste than Africans do. Many populations are moving out of poverty, increasing in affluence. As the Industrial Revolution continues to spread, the changes that occurred in Europe and North America are occurring. Agrobusiness is driving people off of the farms. Former farm laborers are moving to the cities to work in factories. The number of cars being sold in China and India are increasing. People who could not previously afford a car now can. This is good news, but it also means more people are becoming increasingly damaging to the earth. In 1900, the global population was 1.6 billion. In 1950, it was 2.5 billion. By 2000, it was more than 6 billion. In 2016, we reached 7.4 billion. That is, the population quadrupled in the last century. How do you catch a unique rabbit? Unique up on him. How do you catch a squirrel? Lay in the grass and act like a nut. Population growth has not been uniform across populations. There have been four stages of population distribution among populations. The wealthy countries, first to industrialize, have already progressed through all four stages. And countries that are at various stages of industrializing have followed the same pattern. In the first stage, people have many children, but due to poor diet, poor sanitation, poor medical care, many of the children die. Population distribution tends to have many young people and few older people with a high mortality rate. The second demographic stage has a large increase in population. The society industrializes, a middle class develops, fewer people face malnutrition, the quality of medical care improves along with the access to medical care. Sanitation improves, reducing disease, and people live longer and more children survive childhood. In the third stage, as industrialization continues, many of the poor conditions of the working class are improved through unionization, government legislation, and threat of revolution if the wealthy class does not allow for improvements for the working class. People do not have to rely on having many children so that some survive to adulthood to take care of them when they are past their earning years. Various social safety net programs like pensions, retirement, and guaranteed continued medical care take care of people after they no longer work. The birth rate decreases. The birth rate and the death rate equalize, and population growth slows. Societies then reach the fourth stage, in which there is actually a reduction in population growth. Couples tend to have two or fewer children, and fewer individuals choose to have children at all. Children are no longer necessary in terms of survival in old age. People can choose to have children or choose to not have children. These societies experience fewer births than deaths of old age. Germany and Japan, along with many others, are already at this stage. Winged rabbits fly like eagles. Fruit flies like bananas. Let's look at the country that has the most experience at population control, China. In 1966, China was just recovering from a famine. Their population was growing rapidly and agricultural production was not keeping up. They were in the second demographic stage that comes with industrialization. The government began a campaign to encourage the use of birth control and government began denying early marriage licenses so that couples would have to wait to get married and begin having children later. Then in 1978, China's leader Deng Xiaoping 
began making even more impactful policy changes. In 1980 to 2015, China implemented the one child policy. Only one child per couple was allowed. Couples who violated the policy faced fines and loss of employment. Women were pressured to have abortions when they became pregnant with their second child, and some were forcibly sterilized. China is a patriarchal society which values boys more than girls. The result was that many baby girls were abandoned or put up for adoption so that couples could try again for a boy. Many fetuses were aborted when determined to be girls. There were also instances of infanticide, the killing of baby girls shortly after birth. A male to female imbalance resulted with a lack of women for men to marry. By 2050, one fourth of the men ages 50 to 59 will not be married. Men 30 to 39, almost half will not have a wife. China faces a four to one problem an intergenerational demographic imbalance develops with an only child supporting two elderly parents and four elderly grandparents. So China's one child policy was a success at reducing population by reducing births. This created many new problems, but should other countries follow in China's footstep? No, forced abortions and sterilizations, the abandoning of children, the moral and human rights violations are severe. How do you know? Carrots are good for your eyes. You never see rabbits wearing glasses. There are other policy changes that result in lower birth rates that are less harmful and actually beneficial to society. Reducing extreme poverty reduces birth rates. Increasing educational opportunities for women, allowing women control over reproduction, and increasing economic opportunities for women result in women having fewer children. Improving distribution of food so that more children survive to adulthood results in couples having fewer children. They do not have to play the odds of having enough children so that some survive. Creating conditions where people can be more secure in old age, saving programs or state sponsored retirement also results in people having fewer children, for they do not have to rely on their children taking care of them in their post-earning years. In summary, human population has grown since the late Paleolithic, accelerated with the development of agriculture and skyrocketed during the Industrial Revolution. As countries progress to a post-industrial society, the population stabilizes as the human condition is improved for the poorest in society. Growing population damages the environment, reducing the ability for agriculture to continue to produce more food. Due to many parts of the world still entering or yet to enter the Industrial Revolution, the population will continue to grow in the near future. The best way to address the problem is in part to improve the economic condition of the poorest people globally as fast as possible. What do you call a rabbit housekeeper? A dust bunny. I have had near fall. Population is surely growing rapidly. We cannot care it enough about this. We need to jump into action. Let us get going right here and now. Solving this problem would make me happy. There is nothing bunny about mass starvation and environmental destruction. To quote Nobel laureate Henry W. Kendall, if we do not halt population growth with justice and compassion, it will be done for us by nature, brutally and without pity, and will leave a ravaged world.